If you're ever looking to kill your CPU and your computer, just run Civ 6 huge earth maps from the workshop. In today's video, I went just over 600 turns on this uh, beautiful, beautiful map. The crazy part is, is that near the end, it was taking my Ryzen 9 CPU like literally five minutes per turn because the game was chugging that hard. But regardless, this video was super heavily requested. And of course, I want to give it to you. At the time of editing this, the first video actually just hit 100,000 views in like two and a half weeks. So that is really big for my channel. I only have like 25,000 subs, so that's a big deal. So don't worry, there will be more Civ 6 to come. If you want to see that content, make sure you subscribe. And when you subscribe, ding the bell so you get notified every time one of these videos goes live. Also, if you could do me a favor and, and like the video, that would help a lot as well. Now, it's, it's definitely not the prettiest map I've ever seen. I mean, you can see how absolutely massive something like Japan is and how close it is to everything else. But I think in order to like really give them a shot, it's important that they have at least a little bit of room to expand. I decided to go with two versions of Mongolia, just so we have a little bit of extra action over here in East Asia. We also have Chandragupta and Gandhi over here in India. And to make it as interesting as I could, we decided to give them all the Greeks every Greek that we could, we go to them over here. So I think it's safe to say that this whole region is going to be an absolute Thunderdome. I'm looking forward to it. Of course, we have to keep our eyes on Polynesia here. Uh, everybody knows from watching Drew's old videos that sometimes they'll like randomly come over here and land in like, you know, uh, Western America, and then they'll just be this massive behemoth before anybody even reaches them. There's a lot of new sieves in the uh, Americas that make it a little less complicated when it comes to that stuff but somebody to keep our eye on for sure some guys to keep our eyes on early definitely going to be molly over here in the congo as well as uh, shaka zulu because there's a whole lot of land for them to take that is very much uncontested and if they can get a nice strong power base get a snowball going it could be doomed for everybody else same goes with the Civ, like scythia mongolia russia there's a lot of room up here and if they can get that power base, they're going to be scary. I kind of assumed something like this would happen in this area. It looks like everybody set down their cities basically as soon as they could. But Suleiman here could not in time. And uh, I have a mod that allows you to put cities down within two tiles rather than three. So that's why they're packed in here like this. He's not going to be able to get a city down unless he can find an island over here, which I would imagine that these guys are going to go for quickly. This settler might just like go to somebody else who decides to declare war on him. So Ottomans might be out already. I should also mention that I do not have loyalty turned on at all. I have a mod that disables it or like gives everybody like max loyalty. And we don't have Eleanor at all in this game. I just the last one she dominated so much because of the loyalty system. I figured why don't we do have Catherine a chance here? So this is Catherine de Medici here. So the Maori have settled their first city here in the islands here across from a three city sieve in Australia. So they might have some competition. It's definitely starting to get crowded over here, India, Southeast Asia, and uh, all the way up into China. Looks like uh, it's it's only a matter of time before some clashes start happening. This Thunderdome is getting more and more interesting. You can see that uh, most people are thriving, except for uh, Babylon up here. They're not thriving. But then something funny, Sumeria has cut uh, Arabia in half, and they're just like duking it out for that. Uh, and then meanwhile, over in the new world, you can see Grand Columbia just settled his second city just now and is at war with the Inca who didn't settle in Peru. They, they settled over here in Brazil in the Amazon rainforest, which, all right, man, but uh, they're losing right now. And we may see our first elimination from a sieve uh, at the hands of Gran Colombia. Canada is doing pretty good and America is slowly settling cities here. You got San Francisco right off uh, the coast by Washington. So that's kind of funny. Or Chicago down in Georgia. But uh, they are currently fighting a war with uh, a very, very scary Aztecs. Look at all of these eagle warriors that are just lined up. They're also fighting a war with the barbs because, you know, it's it's Civ. You got to fight the barbs. But uh, it's not looking good for America. Aztecs can probably stomp them. Turns out I did speak a little too soon about the Maori because they ended up migrating up and they settled a city in Baja, California. So we'll see how things go with that. Uh, but it's pretty far from home but remember loyalty is disabled so we'll see what they can do with that gaul is the first civ to be eliminated but uh paris was taken by the dutch and up here barbarossa lost his capital here to hungary and now they are a one city civ here in ulm so it's not all lost north africa continues to evade the iberians but uh how about portugal coming over here and cutting off spain in aragon I think that's pretty good. Yeah, it looks like Chicago down here got raised to the ground, probably by the Aztecs if I had to guess. So three cities for the US, not looking too good, but at least they exist, unlike France, who was taken over, split between the Dutch, 
the Spanish and the Romans, who are doing pretty good in their own regard. Rome's only at four pop, so not a whole lot of populations in their cities, but they're playing wide at least. And it is so messy over here. Byzantium has been kicked out of Greece by Greece. And then meanwhile, Macedonia over in Anatolia is doing okay. The Ottomans are gone. There is no settler or warriors for them anymore. They're just done. But it does look like Dido is actually pushing the Egyptians out of Egypt. So something to keep our eyes on. Scythia is setting up a shop over here. Russia has pushed a bit up into the uh, Northlands here. And uh, there's going to be a bit of a struggle, I think, for this area. And speaking of pushing up, Vietnam has pushed up well into China. Lots of farmlands being built up, pinching China. And it looks like Mongolia is also uh, beating up on China as well. So probably not going to be around for too much longer. And meanwhile, over in anime land, you have got 10 pops in their city. And it looks like the Japanese are just thriving in uh, absolutely just unadulterated isolation. I just now realized that I actually missed it. We did not have Ottomans gone. They settled their city over here in like India or whatever this area is called. Uh, Pakistan or something. So that is awesome. They are here. They are here. They have a two pop city in, uh, I think, Pakistan, surrounded by a hostile enemy. So realistically, they're not going to survive, but I'm glad to see them at least settling a city. And 100 turns in, we are getting some regional powers that are getting set up. The Americas are very much still up for grabs. So it looks like the Aztecs and possibly some South American nation is going to come out on top over in Africa. It definitely looks like Mali is going to be the power to beat. Meanwhile, up in Europe, it may actually be the Dutch. I'm, I'm a little concerned of the Dutch. They actually finished off the Germans and uh, they are now the uh, number one like Germanic power, I guess. Though you definitely can't count out the Romans south of them. They're still hanging in there. The Middle East is still very much a mess. We have two Greek nations with only one city each. Uh, and then, like I said, Byzantium was kicked out. Meanwhile, over in India, Chadragupta is eating up Gandhi, so uh, not looking good for them. And to finally settle the debate on Taiwan and its kind of national identity, it's Vietnam. Taiwan is Vietnam. And China is now one city left with their new capital over here in this Wuxian or whatever. And my worst nightmare has come to pass and America has been split between Native Americans and Canadians. Uh, I really don't think it gets much worse than this. Meanwhile, the Japanese are colonizing the west coast of the US and uh, the Polynesian slash Maori are not doing anything, so they're good. But the Aztecs are making it happen well up into Florida and the southern US. Meanwhile, the Maya have decided to colonize the Caribbean islands. So Jamaicans and all that is, uh, there, turns out that they're actually Maya this time around. And then because there was land available overseas, the Maori decided to colonize part of Antarctica, because reasons. We do have our first Iberians here in Northern Africa with Portugal and Spain, but uh, they've got quite a bit to contest with over here. Mali looking extremely well, having a good game so far. Congo doing pretty good, but how about those Zulu, man? That is a lot of pops in a very small area of Africa. So I imagine they're going to be a military powerhouse later with this much production. Oh, and this is funny too. The Maori are also in this other portion of Antarctica, not this part, but this part. They also have a random island over here, like the Seychelles or whatever, in uh, the Indian Ocean. So they are all over the place, and I love it. Indonesia is actually having a very good game, and I think they may be one of the pocket picks here. Again, anybody who lives most of the game in isolation and doesn't necessarily have to spend their resources on war generally is going to be in a better position. And boy, they're in a good position. They've got a lot of pops. Meanwhile, over in Europe, it looks like uh, Great Britain is doing pretty good. They've gotten over into Ireland, and they've kicked the Scots out of Scotland. And the Scots exist primarily in Northern Ireland over here, Greenland, Iceland, and uh, Orkney, I think this island is. Uh, and then sad to say, it looks like the Norwegians have conquered the Swedes. Uh, so, you know, take from that what you will. They've also settled a little bit of land over here in Copenhagen as well as Jutland. So it looks like Norwegian is indeed the superior Scandinavian culture. It's been confirmed. Carthage has been founded by the Romans as well as uh, some lands over here. And uh, they're doing pretty good, but they have a Magna Gratia down here in the south. The Greeks have pushed over and are contesting them. And then you have Macedonia, who's just doing nothing. They've just been sitting here for like 250 turns doing nothing. <laughs> One city and that's it. I have natural disasters cranked all the way up to five actually with a mod. So Russia has been getting beat up on by snowstorms quite a bit over here. Aside from that, it really doesn't look like many people are being hit too hard by a lot of them. Some sandstorms and droughts over in these regions. 
but like places like India, they're thriving. They're doing very good. And of course, Persia has conquered Istanbul. So Istanbul over here in like Pakistan, it's now Persian. So that's a thing as well. Well, my friends, it looks like Alexander finally <laughs> at uh, like 350 turns in is going to finally lose here. Uh, he's able to attack over here, but this a giant, giant death robot from Phoenicia looks like it's uh, about ready to zero in on him. So uh, rest in peace, Alexander. You did literally nothing. And uh, that's pretty boring. So good riddance, I guess. And they're not alone with the giant death robots. They're very, very prolific. They're everywhere right now. Specifically, Indonesia pumping them out because Indonesia is massive right now. They have like 15 pops in like every city they have doing extremely well. Well enough to probably be the most powerful nation in the game. That is, except for uh, the Aztecs who are doing some wild stuff over here. Do you guys think they have enough military engineers? Seems like they might need to build some railroads or something or build railroads and move on and build some more railroads, I guess. Regardless, they're doing incredibly well. They've pushed the Mayas back a few and uh, they have set up shop over here in Mexico and Southern US looking incredibly good. Scotland's still hanging out up here, but uh, not doing well. <laughs> and then you have Spain who hasn't done anything. Meanwhile, he's got Portugal with 31, 18, 25 and nine over here. So basically every city that they have has more pops than any city in Spain. So I think Portugal is the dominant nation over here in Iberia, but you know, we'll see how things go by the time it ends. Rome continuing to just chill, doing well, but not doing any war, at least not a whole lot of war from what I can tell. Uh, sitting pretty and letting their, letting their cities develop over time. But look at all these robots for Zulu. I have a feeling Things about to get spicy here in South Africa. Congo's got the base, but uh, they've only got a couple of the giant robots, whereas Zulu has like 10. So probably quite a bit of uranium down here, if I had to guess. And uh, it's probably going to give them the edge they need. Also, Maori ended up getting their third city down in Antarctica. Very funny. This one over here, still doing well. This one down here, fine. This one here, 20 pops. Another one here. They have this one up here in Hawaii. They lost this one, sadly, but uh, they have another one up here <laughs> in like uh, whatever this Chukchi area is in Siberia. So I assume that's part of the Civs AI, but it's really funny to just see one nation with like one city on each continent, all with like mediocre pops in it. But if Aztecs can move north and conquer this land and or move south and conquer this land, there is nothing that will stop them. I'm very much convinced of that. And if Indonesia wants a couple more cities, I think they can probably push for that domination that they might be looking for with all these robots they've got going on. And Japan is actually expanding. Colonial Japan is a thing all the way from California up into Alaska. And it appears that Maori have some competition down here with uh, Vietnamese settling two cities in Antarctica, as well as Shaka Zulu settling two more over here on this landmass in uh, the Indian Ocean. And it looks like the Falklands has been given to this uh, Mapuche with uh, one over here in Antarctica next to this other Maori settlement. So quite a bit of a diversity here in Antarctica. And Istanbul has changed hands yet again, this time going to Indonesia. <laughs> and uh, this is not the only city that's gone to Indonesia. Aside from doing very well in their own home island chain here, their archipelago, the Indonesians have annexed Khmer, taking their three cities over here and uh, now controlling the city of the former nation. And I am not sure if the Koreans took this province from Japan or if they colonized it themselves. But Korea is over here splitting up a couple of Japanese cities. So probably going to be a hot point if I had to guess. Though I think my favorite thing of this whole run is Wilhelmina dominating here in Europe uh, as the Dutch. Because the Dutch, I feel, normally get like dominated early on and uh, don't really have a chance to thrive. Uh, my last video, they weren't even in it and that was just like a bug on my end. But this time, they're doing very good. And right to their south, we have the glorious Roman Empire with their beautiful green energy. With all these windmills, I bet they are putting Germany's clean coal to shame. But Portugal's cities are absolutely thriving with more population and basically all of them than any of the Spanish cities. So safe to say we know who the dominant Iberian nation is this time around. And as far as Africa goes, it's really anybody's game at this point. Zulu, Congo, as well as Mali are all doing okay, though Mali has the highest military score, so something to keep an eye on. In South America, they have not done anything. North America, it's still very much the Aztecs, 
uh, the Cree and, and the Canadians are just too polite. They're not doing anything. They don't want to go to war with anybody. So they're just sitting there. But uh, yeah, the Cree and the Aztecs are the dominant nations. But like I said, that Japanese uh, settlements over here on the West, definitely something to keep an eye on. And as it turns out in the end, Indonesia is not the only nation to go colonial. Portugal, big surprise, right? Has taken over the Caribbean, pushing the Maya back to the uh, Yucatan Peninsula and uh, whatever this area is, Nicaragua or whatever. And two cities left pinched between Gran Colombia and uh, the Aztecs here, not doing so well. And North America <laughs> didn't do much in the last hundred or so turns, though it does look like the Aztecs have a couple of death robots parked over here, maybe looking for a fight with Canada. I heard a funny joke a couple of weeks ago, and I think you guys might appreciate it. They said that one day Canada will conquer the world and you'll all be sorry. If you understand that joke and you appreciate it, make sure you leave a like and don't forget to subscribe because I like you. Japan's colonial empire in the new world looks good, though I think they may have actually lost another city to Korea. Could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure they lost this city. And I'm fairly certain that the Maori have conquered a few more cities down here in the south, but uh, don't forget the Indonesia one of Jagaraga or whatever over here in Antarctica. I'm disappointed in Shaka Zulu as well as the Congo, but uh, Mali did pretty good overall. Great Britain didn't really do a whole lot after they kicked the Scots out of Scotland. They're still hanging out with their two pop city up here in Greenland, uh, but yeah, the Scots didn't do well. Norway maintained their dominance up here in Scandinavia, being the number one power in the region. They even took a city from Russia, which is pretty cool. And nations like Georgia, who just kind of got pinched in and couldn't expand any, definitely set them back. It was the naval superpowers that ended up dominating the world, but that's not really a surprise when you think about it in terms of like how things work historically. Open ocean lends itself to a lot of expansion opportunities. And I didn't show religion in the last video and a lot of people commented asking for it. So here you go. Eastern Orthodoxy controls the entirety of Europe for the most part with uh, Buddhism and Catholicism taking up the majority of the land over here in the new world. But Islam is the religion of the Cree who uh, control a lot of Canada. Uh, but then over here we have Buddhism because Buddhism was spread from Australia, I believe was one of the founding centers here, pushing it into the new world. So good on you guys. East Asia, also very Buddhist. But uh, the one that wins is definitely Zoroastrianism. All of Africa and the Middle East, all the way up into, uh, what is this, like Kazakhstan, Russia, Siberia area. So Zoroastrianism definitely wins. And taking a look at the demographics, this is the demographics mod, by the way, people asked a lot about that in the previous video. Uh, population obviously is gonna go to Indonesia. Soldiers, however, goes to Robert the Bruce. Not sure how that works, but we'll let it slide. Crop yield, again, Indonesia. GDP going to Mansa Musa, making him the richest man in the world. Most land goes to Australia, which is pretty interesting. They must have settled a lot of cities, which isn't really that surprising. And the most goods in the world goes to Canada, producing so much maple syrup that they are fueling their entire economy off of it. And as far as a domination victory goes, nobody actually did a whole lot. Nobody conquered more than one city except for Indonesia. They have the city of <laughs> the Ottomans, but I don't know if that really counts because they only had one city as well. Uh, and then obviously the Khmer. Aside from that, Harold Hadrada took out the Swedes. Hojo took out the Mayans, which I actually did not know that was a thing. Oh, I thought this was the Mayans. So it looks like the Portuguese and the Japanese split up the Mayans. That is really good. I didn't see that. But either way, after that, it's just like Gorgo, Julius Caesar, Wilhelmina, who definitely was probably uh, the most overperforming Civ of the video. Them and Vietnam. Vietnam definitely surprised me. Shout out Vietnam. This video was kind of hard to record, to be honest, because it ran so slow in the end. It was like each turn was like five minutes. And uh, I ended up calling it out a little bit after 600 turns, like I probably would have said in the intro. But if you guys enjoyed this, I think I will stick to more regional maps moving forward while I kind of figure out how to do this because I'm still very much new to figuring out uh, AI only Civ stuff. If you have a map suggestion, go ahead and leave it in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you leave a like. If you haven't already, you should definitely subscribe because you are missing out on a ton of fun videos that come out every week. If you aren't already subscribed and ding the bell so you get notified when all these dope videos go live. Special thanks to ALS Gamer, LeGrand Puba, Geo, Josh Kuczynski, Edger Rhino, Juan Damon, Ian Powell, Cannon Fodder, Corbett Gaming, Anthony Grove, Gary Newhouse, Saranska, Ricardo, Cobalt, Rex Rex, Total Farce for It, Drunk Binary, Faith and Albright, and many more. Thank you. For early access videos, check out the join button or the link in the description below.